What's up guys, Rob of Rule of Two Review here, and uh, today is super exciting, as it's always exciting whenever I start a video, um, because today I get to talk about more Star Wars. And you have to forgive me because it's been really slow in the gaming news front, so I know I haven't really made a gaming video in quite a while, and even my last one about my Amiibo unboxing was kind of a stretch. Um, there just really hasn't been a whole lot of news and a lot of things going on new with gaming to talk about. Um, and, you know, coincidentally enough, I had a reason to talk about the reveal of the title for Episode 7 a couple of weeks ago, and now here I am with another reason to talk about the brand new trailer for Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Um, it is now Monday, and the trailer released both online and in a couple of theaters on Friday. So I'm a couple days late. Um, I know everyone's been talking about it, geeking out about it, losing their mind, making videos, YouTube videos and vlogs and all this stuff. IGN did a rewind theater, which I think was kind of completely terrible. And I normally like their rewind theater, so that was kind of too bad. So everyone's been a buzz about it. Um, in case you stumble upon this video, I should let you know of the massive Star Wars fan that I am. And I know everyone says they're a massive Star Wars fan. Trust me, I'm a huge fan. My arm is literally covered in Star Wars goodness and with more to come. I am really, really dedicated. I'm passionate about the story and the characters in the universe. Um, a lot of people get bogged down in the, the character this and the actor this and the Jar Jar Binks this and the midi chlorians that and the, all this other stuff. And it's like, what color is this lightsaber or that lightsaber? Those are the fun things. That's like the, the salt and the pepper of how we dissect Star Wars. I am just so into the lore and the universe. That is that is my thing. It's it's very important to me in, I think, a really unique way. And it is to a lot of people, too. I don't want to, you know, downplay that. Anyway, whatever. Long story short, huge fan. Very excited. Um, I consider myself a true fan. I re I'm going to reiterate this from my last Star Wars video, too, because I do enjoy all six films, both trilogies. Um, I have no problems with George Lucas. You know, there's this vocal minority on the Internet for years that have had this problem with him because they have disparaging remarks to say about the prequels, which I think is just nonsense if you're actually a Star Wars, at least a, a really true Star Wars fan. Um, uh, so anyway, point is, that is the kind of fan I am. So my perspective coming into this new trilogy and this first film of this new trilogy is pretty intense. And when the, tra when the uh, trailer first re was releasing on Friday, um, okay, l l let me go back a minute. We got the news that the trailer was coming a couple days prior to the release on Friday. And initially, it seemed as if it was only going to be releasing in theaters, a few theaters across the country, and that was it. And I was so thrilled at that idea because I think this online trailer reveal thing is that is really common nowadays is, I hate to say it, kind of bullshit because I think it's removing the power and the mystique of the big screen experience when you're in an audience and everyone can get excited and be like, I didn't know this was coming, or I didn't know I was going to see this trailer, or oh my god, look at these things I had no idea about. The internet has totally killed that mystique, and I think that that's too bad. So, and I say that as somebody, by the way, who, my perspective when it comes to new trailers for big movies I really care about, I refuse to watch them online until I've first seen them revealed for the first time in a movie theater with a booming sound. It's covering my entire vision on the big screen. I got my best friends with me. I'm in a huge audience of other people getting excited. That is the way. I grew up that way. I refuse to let that part die for as long as I can hold on to it. So, you know, when it came to the Star Wars trailer, I was really like, you couldn't pay me a million dollars to watch that shit online. I am waiting to see it in a movie theater. Fuck all y'all. Everyone else can watch it online and just, you know, huddle over their computers and their phones and watch it. And that's fine. It, I have no problem with other people doing it. For me, my thing is to, is to wait, especially with the re first reveal of any footage of the new Star Wars film. That was very important to me. So we had it being revealed initially only in theater, and I was like, that is wonderful. That is, that, this is the film of all films to, you know, bring back that true spirit of, you got to go to the movie theater. You have to see this thing on the big screen. My, <clears throat> excuse me. In 2005, in the end of 2004, beginning of 2005, uh, late 2004, the teaser for Revenge of the Sith premiered uh, before The Incredibles. And in early 2005, the full trailer revealed for Revenge of the Sith before the film Robots, the animated film Robots. Um, and at the time, myself, my girlfriend at that time, and a couple friends went to see both of those films at that time just to see the trailers. And that was when it was harder to get your news about these kinds of things on the internet, you know, even in 2005. But they let us know and we knew exactly what to do. And I think The Incredibles, um, we saw that just the two of us. And then when it came time for Robots, there was a whole group of us, you know, friends and stuff that all got together to go see that. And then we went to talk about it afterwards. And that was great. Like, that was so much fun to think like, oh, the trailer's coming out. We're going to go see any movie. Granted, The Incredibles was great, you know. But we're going to go see just any movie just to see this trailer. And it was like a really fun thing. 
and it just kept that tingling buzz and excitement you know, within your nerdy self of, ah, oh, new Star Wars, it's fun. And at that time, it was the last Star Wars, so it was, like, extra exciting. Um, and that was a great thing. And so I, I felt like that was happening again. I was like, great, they're just going to put this in a movie that people have to do what we did now almost 10 years ago. And that was such a great... I have great memories of traveling just to watch Star Wars trailers for the first time. That was a great thing. And then we got the news the day before that, oh, don't worry, it's also going to be online tomorrow. And I was like motherfuckers like you just killed everything that had me excited for two days you know and also i forgot about this point extra excited because uh, we have a theater here in my local area i mean it's about half an hour away but it's a, it's a place i know really well that was playing one of the nine or so theaters listed playing this trailer so damn i was like perfect i can actually go see it i can travel to see it and then they killed it by saying it was going to be online anyway I've been rambling for a couple minutes. I'm sorry. I'm going to actually get to the goodness. Now I just want to talk about the fact that I've now seen the trailer. I waited. Didn't see it Friday. Didn't see it Saturday. I had, a, had my, my girlfriend and a couple other people. We had to find a time that I, we could get together to go see it together because I have some other friends who were willing to wait also to watch it in a, in a movie theater. And so, you know, last night we went to see a movie so that we could see the trailer in this theater. And um, so now I've seen it. Now I'm going to get to the meat, which you've actually probably been waiting for, for to hear me talk about. Um... What did I think of the of the teaser? Um, it was fantastic. It was wonderful. It gave me goosebumps, and I have just been nerding out over theorizing about what could possibly be going on with this new trailer. So, you know, my, my deeper thoughts about the trailer, I'm going to talk about probably the one thing I really didn't like about it, and I can't say I didn't like about it, but the one thing that bumped me out is it didn't have the Lucasfilm logo in front of it. And that sucks, because that, you know, shiny, glowing sparkling wonderful logo of joy when that thing starts and the music is just barely kicking up and it you know the little sparkles go across it and fill in the letters that i mean is like ingrained in my soul as like the best moment you know something great is about to be on screen whether it's a trailer or a movie or whatever i associate that so seriously with star wars and the indiana jones movies it's like that should have been there and all the previous trailers had that too so i don't really know why that was taken away. I'll just chalk that one up to the fucking bullshit that Disney pulls with everything anymore. Star Wars related, you know. Again, I love Disney, just not with Star Wars. So, you know, maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's just something that's so personal to, and intimate to me. I really was excited to finally see that logo come up, and it didn't have that, so. But, anyway, we've all seen it. You've seen it. You know it starts off in the desert, sand. It's gotta be Tatooine, right? There's a couple other shots in the, in the whole trailer that makes it feel like it's Tatooine. Um, and we see a gentleman who is dressed like a stormtrooper, John Boyega, the actor, um, from Attack the Block, which is criminally underrated. Great movie. Um, he pops up wearing a stormtrooper outfit. I maintain that, I mean, some people are calling him a stormtrooper, and I feel like it's more than possible that he isn't really a stormtrooper, but some crazy kooky events might have led him to be wearing a stormtrooper outfit. I don't know why I get that feeling, because he's obviously so so frantic and rattled, you know, in that scene. So it seems like there's like larger things at play than just, I'm a stormtrooper and I took my helmet off because I was hot. Like there's something going on and I just feel like he isn't going to be a stormtrooper. Maybe he will be, but if I had to guess, I would say I don't think he is. I think something else, maybe he's like in disguise or was trapped somewhere and dressed as a stormtrooper to get out of, you know, so that no one would find him. Maybe they were pulling a Chewbacca thing. I mean, who knows? Like who freaking knows? Anything could be happening there. So, you know, it starts off with him and the, the, the trailer is just wonderful because it, the the uh, things that I was really worried about going into it is if it was going to look, feel, and sound like Star Wars. And I feel like between the six films and two established trilogies, there's a lot to pull from, but there is a level of consistency across all six of those movies that the look, tone, feel, and sound, the aural and audible sensation of Star Wars all has to be intact for it to feel that way. And this is now, yes, it's Lucasfilm, but now it's part of this bigger company, Disney, and... Lucas is involved as the story consultant, and it is, like, really his story, but at the same time, they've done a lot to change it, and it's a different filmmaker, a great filmmaker, J.J. Abrams, a different filmmaker making this movie, so before seeing any footage, I was just not quite sure how it was going to look, and that was, you know, probably one of my biggest areas of trepidation is, will it feel and look like Star Wars? And it so did. It looked like a perfect mix of the tone and look of the original trilogy and the tone and look of the prequel trilogy. It was... It was just fantastic. And the music, it sounded like Star Wars. Beyond just the Star Wars theme that kicks in once the Millennium Falcon shoots in, I mean, it still sounded like Star Wars. There's this palpable, audible sensation 
that you just recognize it. It's a, it, you can just feel it in the background without really knowing that you're listening to it. And it's like, it's Star Wars. It just, it's Star Wars. You can hear it. And I know that it, it sounds like Star Wars is happening around me. And just the, these little, these little booming crescendos, bow, 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 those kind of things borrowed from uh, uh, moments in both Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi score, you know, being implemented into these quick cuts in this trailer. Awesome. So great. I mean, it, it was just so wonderful. And the quick shots of, you know, John Boyega in the Stormtrooper outfit. The, the other shots of the actual Stormtroopers is probably the other thing I didn't super love, and I'll get to that in a minute. You know, there's the rolling droid that everyone loves. You have pod rate. It's in the desert, and you can see a bunch of broken, like, pods and stuff in the background. I think that is such a, a really cool nod, you know, and a throwback to, to Lucas and to Phantom Menace, you know, and maybe even to Anakin's history. Like, I feel like that might have something to do with how the Skywalker legacy might be continuing in this new trilogy. Um, you know, that was like really, really cool to see that stuff. Everyone loves that little droid. Um, some people think he's going to be really important. I feel like he might just be like a random droid, like, a, you know, like an establishing character within like some scene at, in Tatooine or maybe a Mos, I Mos Eisley or Mos Espa. I don't know. It, it might not be Tatooine, to be fair, but it's all but confirmed. It's basically Tatooine. Um, you know, and like all these things are happening. I think it's so great. We, of course, cut to, okay, there's the two... Actually, there's a, there's a couple money shots now that I think about it. Where would I want to go next? Um, obviously, we have... Okay, let's get to the big money shot, which is these, this character that's walking through the woods that we cut to. Um, and it's a snowy forest. It's nighttime, clad all in black. Not 100% sure it's a male. I've been discussing that a little bit. But I, I feel like this one, I feel like he, it is a male. Um, probably a dude, who knows, some character walking through the forest and busts out a lightsaber. And then, of course, you know, everyone's losing their mind over this. You got the hilt that pops out also in lightsaber blades on the side. And some people are mad at it and some people think it's great. It's fucking awesome. I don't know who thinks it isn't. Get the fuck out of here if you don't think that shit's awesome because it's awesome. Very much reminiscent of the Darth Maul reveal from the first Phantom Menace, first Phantom Menace trailer, which was amazing. Um, and I thought that was really cool. However... Pay attention to it. Go and watch it again. And I'm, I'll make sure to have some pictures and stuff you can see here. Pay attention to that again because the blade looks very different. It looks more like a flame than it does a lightsaber blade. It's not a clean look. It's very much like a burning embric kind of sensation that's going on with the actual long blade and then the two parts that come out for the hill. It looks very different. And I don't know if that's going to be, you know, in this, in this you know, empire-ravaged future... I'm sorry. Well, future from not our time, because obviously it's a long time ago. Future from the previous two trilogies future. You know, this Empire ravaged time where, you know, dec decades after the Empire was doing what it was doing, and maybe even still doing what it's doing, which I think is the case, you know. And so, and, and the Jedi haven't really existed for now probably 50 some odd years or what have you. Luke was the first true Jedi to come back, you know, sometime in the past from this film. In the beginning of Return of the Jedi, when he shows up as the first, it is the Return of the Jedi. That's what happened in that movie because of Luke. And so, you know, the it's very important in Jedi culture to create your own la lightsaber. That's very important. It's even mentioned in Return of the Jedi when, when you know, Anakin slash Vader says, "I see you have constructed your own lightsaber. Your skills of a Jedi, skills as a Jedi, are nearly complete." You know, that's a reference to that, and they built on that in some of the expanded universe stuff. So, building your own lightsaber, finding the holocron crystal for your lightsaber that creates the blade and the saber that will be yours and defines your Force-sensitive Jedi characteristic is very important. So when I think about a future, you know, of when the Force Awakens has taken place and how what Force-sensitive people or Jedi and or Sith are around at that time, I, I think it's interesting that there's no Jedi Order. There hasn't been a Jedi Order again for like, what, 50-some-odd years probably by this time. So... Maybe the, 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 art, the art and the purity behind that craft is just dead. Maybe it's just people who are like Jedi. This would be borrowing from the Expanded Universe. They're like Jedi, but they're really just Force-sensitive rogue people. And they're like, they're like building their own makeshift lightsaber the best they can because they didn't grow up in a time where the Jedi and the school and the council were relevant in weaning and raising Jedis to be the real warriors and guardians of peace and justice in the galaxy like they're supposed to be. So it's really just like, ah, uh, I have the Force, and the lightsaber, and they just like make this thing. And so the ultimate end quality of the blade just might turn out differently. You know, it might turn out that way. That's, that's my theory on that. And I think it's a pretty darn good one. So we see that. Is that a good guy? Is it a bad guy? Who knows? That's really exciting. Um, I, I, I have some theories, and there are some theories that it might be Luke. 
And that would, that's really cool because it would have been great to see Luke in this trailer. Um, if we were to see any of the three, it would have been nice to see him. But at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of glad we didn't see anybody. I don't think that was Luke. It just doesn't look like Luke. Um, he's going to be quite old, so I don't know if he's going to be able to move as nimbly and powerfully as that person. But then again, Yoda showed us what the Force can do for old, weathered human, you know, people. Obviously, you can overcome that pretty quickly if you're very strong in the Force. And Luke is probably going to be a badass in the Force come the Force Awakens, come this movie. So, who knows? But I, my, I just don't think that that's going to be Luke. It would be great if it was, but I don't think that was. Um, so, that's some of my theories on that stuff. Um, they, 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 the other money shots, you get the Millennium Falcon flying around. These crazy swooping camera angles, you know, following its crazy trajectory and stuff, which look amazing. It was the first thing that I was like, well, that looks less Star Wars-y, just based on the previous cinematography shots and the framing Lucas had done in the old films, including even Kirshner and Marcond in Empire and Jedi. It just didn't look like a lot of those shots. But, you know, discuss with my friends a little bit more. Um, you know, some of the, the second Death Star run with Lando in the Millennium Falcon and Return of the Jedi, you know, reminiscent of that. Um, Obi-Wan going after Jango Fett in the Asteroid Belt and Attack of the Clones, reminiscent of that. The opening huge space shot battle of Revenge of the Sith, reminiscent of that. Lots of creative camera angles that are these swooping, flowing motions. So this is like a next step to that. This is a newer film now, so it makes sense that it looks this way. And it looks, you know, J Abrams is killing it in that respect. So that was very exciting. Just seeing the Falcon again is like, how is this even real? Like, it is almost just like, you don't mean that. You don't mean that. You're really putting the Falcon on screen. And we knew it. But once you actually see it, it's like, I can't believe it's actually right there. And then there it fucking is. And it's so great to see that, you know, with the music happening. The X-Wings, oh my goodness, those X-Wings. They look so amazing just seeing them on screen. I couldn't contain the joy in my being when I saw them, you know, like lining up, you know, like in like a formation going over the water, it looks like, or something with the mountains in the background. God, they just looked great. And it's like, I love like the clean, shiny look of the prequels because it made sense. And those movies look great. I don't care what anyone says. They look fantastic. But it's nice to go back to like, you know, the grittier sense, and just to, the, the X-Wing design, the, the original trilogy design, all the, everything was so angular and, and, and solid and mechanical and metal looking. In the time of the prequels, you know, because of, you know, everything, you know, there was peace, relative peace until everything fell apart in Sith. It's like, okay, everything looked great. There was, a, there was you know, money to be had. There was wealth. You know, the government was ruling properly. The Republic had, you know, everyone in the galaxy was living well. <clears throat> the Jedi were keeping everybody safe. And everything just looked fantastic and very clean and sleek, you know, and it, and it was wonderful for that. But going back to this old school look just felt so good to see again, you know. Um, and those X-Men, they just looked amazing. Seeing them, you know, helps. This is what's the, the most we have to put in perspective, the story and the potential path of this new film. and this new I'm sorry, this new trilogy, you know. Um, because for all we knew, we might not see anything reminiscent of, you know, the Empire, the design of the way things look. We might not see X-Wings or Death Stars or Star Destroyers and all these things. And we see, I mean, we knew we'd see the Falcon. We're going to see um, the x wing I mean, just seeing X-Wings and then, of course, the TIE Fighters. So seeing that stuff again is like, wow, there are still things going on. You know, the story obviously didn't end with Return of the Jedi. It didn't end when Luke stopped Palpatine, you know, Sidious and Darth Vader and freed his father, freed Anakin, blew up the Death Star, stopped the Empire at that time, and saved his friends. That wasn't the end of the story. Things continued. Why are we seeing X-Wings and TIE Fighters and all this? Why is this happening? I mean, obviously, I feel like the Empire isn't gone just because Sidious has been destroyed and just because Darth Vader has been destroyed. There are still things happening. And then my favorite shot, this is a personal favorite, no one might, might agree with me with this. My personal favorite shot, I never thought we would see this, this justifies that theory the most, is the shot of an X-Wing pilot wearing a helmet with a Rebellion symbol on it. That means the Rebellion must still exist. And that's a crazy thought to be thinking that we might be following, oh my computer's freaking out, sorry. We might be following the Rebellion still is just wonderful and I, I I just didn't really expect to see that, you know? It might seem really simple to some people, but for me, it just wasn't even a thought in my mind. And even before seeing the trailer, I actually saw the photograph of that pilot, which some people say is Oscar Isaac, who I know is in the movie, and I guess maybe that is. I haven't seen anything confirming it, but it doesn't look like him. And I've seen a lot of shots and slowed down video. It doesn't look like Oscar Isaac to me, but I could, I could be wrong. You know, you guys tell me if you know anything that I don't, but 
I, I'm really excited to see who he is in this movie. And if that is him, awesome. I mean, great, he's flying an X-Wing. That's fucking amazing. Um, anyway, I didn't expect to see that. And when I saw it, I almost welled up with tears. I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. Look at a, a new pilot wearing a rebe rebel symbol helmet in an X-Wing. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's so cool. You know, it, it could have been a totally different story. There could have been nothing really relating it to the old films. X-Wings, TIE Fighters, Pod Racers. Like, we might not have seen any of those things. And we get it all. Um, we have Kois, we have a Kois, we have Kois. Um, I, I don't know, my mind's going in a bunch of places now and I'm kind of wrapping up really my ideas. I'm, I'm geeking out about it and I'm trying to like both theorize as well as just be excited, you know, at the same time. And it's, all these things are happening and bouncing around in my head, you know. Um, the voiceover, the narration, which has since confirmed to be Andy Serkis, which I thought so going into it, um, is, is great. There's way, you know, when I first watched it, I felt like he said a lot. So I was like, oh, I can't wait to watch that again and really pay attention to what that, what that narrator says. And then it turned out all he said was, you know, there's been an awakening, you know, okay, in the force, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, the light and the dark. And, you know, so he's, okay, talk about the light side and the dark side, Jedi and Seth, good and evil, okay. And that was li like literally all he said. I was like, okay, wow, he really didn't say as many things as I thought he did, which is totally fine. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, you know, we see that female character, um, Rid Lin uh, Kinsey Ridley or Lindsay Ridley, I think her, oh, shit, I'm a dick. Ridley is her last name. I, that's what I'm sure of. We don't really know her character. She looks like a regular Tatooine kind of... She's in like a Tatooine-esque kind of garb, which is really cool to see again, too. Hops on this, you know, really weird, cool-looking speeder bike and speeds away. Another great establishing shot showing, you know, bringing us to familiar territory and a familiar sound and setting again, which is so cool to see. And this whole trailer... All it was, teaser, was a tease. It was it was no complete shots. It was nothing that you could re really analyze more than I'm spending, you know, 25 minutes doing right now. And that's just because I'm going overboard in my analyzation. Um, really, it's just a bunch of, like, hints at things, and that's it. No real dialogue. We didn't see Luke. We didn't see Leia. We didn't see Han Solo. We didn't see Chewbacca. Lando, if he comes back, for all we know. Um, I'm waiting to see if maybe, like, you know, Anakin comes back. I'd love to see something like that. Or Obi-Wan. Uh, you know, Yoda. There's, like, a lot of potential for, like, a lot of these returning characters, you know. I would love to see, like, Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen come back in, like, a Force Ghost kind of thing. And, yeah, I don't know, like, something to... It, mostly because we can't have Alec Guinness anymore, you know. So that's not a possibility. So it'd have to be Ewan McGregor. Qui-Gon, you know, maybe we see Liam Neeson. I would love to see some things, you know, further connecting it to, you know, going way, way back to the prequel time. Uh, my theory is that this is where I will end this incredibly long video about my excitement over the new Star Wars teaser. Um, my theory is, and I kind of said this before, I think what we're looking at with this third and final trilogy, I think this is the final trilogy of the Lucas saga, as I've said before, George Lucas's trilogy, you know, nine episodes. I think that we're looking, we're look, going to be seeing a third and final generation of the Skywalker name, the Skywalker family, at least following the final name. You know, again, a lot of the things from Expanding the Universe have to be removed. I think they might be borrowing from some elements, but we can't for say, you know, for sure say that we know about the kids and the wife. We're not going to see Mara Jade. I don't think we're going to see Anakin or Jason Solo. Like, these things aren't going to probably happen, which is too bad. But elements of that I think are going to be borrowed. But I think that we're going to be seeing the final generation of Skywalker. And that's great. You know, we've already seen two. We've seen Anakin Skywalker in the prequels. We've seen Luke Skywalker in the original trilogy and they're, how their stories both are individual and also cohesive. And now we're going to get this third and final trilogy, you know, episodes 7, 8, and 9. And obviously it's time to continue that line. What happens next? You know, we're going to have Luke in at least this first movie. He's involved, and Leia, you know, they're involved as Skywalker, force sensitive Jedi Skywalkers. Um, and what I would like to see happen. My, my, not, I don't, it's kind of a theory, but it's also more of a wish. I mean, I guess it could be true, but I would love it if the, the, this new and last Skywalker was a girl, was a woman. I would like it if it's not the son of Skywalker, it's the daughter of Skywalker. And she could be the new hero of the Rebellion and of the, well, I guess I can't say the Republic, you know, of, of the Jedi. She would have to be a Jedi. I would love to see that. It's not like mandatory. I mean, honestly, even a, the, a new Son of Skywalker would give me chills because the Son of Skywalker, Son of Skywalker, that's a great thing to continue. But I would love the idea if they switched it up. And like, why can't we see a... Re I mean, we've had bad... You know, both Padme and Leia were badass women, female characters in Star Wars films. But they were the only ones. And they weren't really warriors. They held their own. They were snarky and talked shit and got shit done for sure. And they were both awesome. But they weren't the warriors that I think a true Jedi Skywalker, a female Skywalker would be. I want to see that. 
I want to see a, you know, 18, 20 year old, young Skywalker daughter. A woman who will destroy evil and fight the Sith and hold her own and fuck up everyone in her path. And, be, and keep that nobility of the Skywalker name and the Jedi legacy alive. I think that would be great. So I wonder if that girl, whatever her name is, I'm a, such a dickhead, but that girl, maybe that's who she is. You know, there's another female cast as well besides, uh, um, besides Carrie Fisher as Leia again. And um, I just can't remember a lot. of so many newcomers, you know. Um, Boyega and Adam Driver were the only ones I remember off the top of my head. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is rumored. Andy Serkis, we know, did that voiceover. And I have a theory about if he's playing somebody in the movie and who that voiceover was. But anyway, that's kind of my theory and my hope and wish. And, you know, I really wonder what you guys think about that. What do you think is happening, could happen? And what do you think my idea or theory about a female Skywalker being this last Skywalker generation? I think that would be amazing, you know, just so cool. I think they would, and I just think that, that, the, that the stories and Lucasfilm and JJ and the other filmmakers will knock it out of the park. So I think that's it. I think I got it out. I had a lot to say and... It's, it's tough because really my whole thing is that I just watched this trailer a couple times and all I think about is what could be happening, where could it be going, and I can't wait to theorize again. I will always remember, and this is why I still love the prequels despite, you know, the vocal minorities disparaging remarks about them, is I remember, I was a teenager when those started and when Phantom Menace came out and we got so into it and theorizing about where the story was going to go next leading into the new movie before we even knew anything about it. And then doing that again for the final film, that was so fun. Those three-year gaps between those movies were, like, seriously probably the best memories of my life. And that's when I went from, like, you know, just I like Star Wars a lot to super fan. Is I realized what this universe was capable of and what it made me want to do and think about and do with my friends when we hung out and talked about Star Wars. Like, that was great. And especially because we had the ability to connect it to the original trilogy. Now we'll have a new trilogy that we have the ability to connect to two previous trilogies. And so this first film is going to kick off a lot of great things and brand new memories that we'll all be creating for years and generations to come. And we'll be able to tell our kids, yeah, I remember two or three Star Wars trilogies, you know, and at that time there'll be fucking 100 Star Wars movies because Disney. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just a really exciting time. And I love that we can do this again. I just can't even stress to you guys. It means so much to me. Yes, I like to geek out over, like, the fun, the, the flavorful stuff. Oh, Millennium Falcon. Oh, lightsaber with handles. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that stuff is great. But to me, it's also the characters, the story, the universe, the emotion. What will be happening in this new trilogy? That's what I can't wait to see play out. It's going to be awesome. It's just going to be so great. So anyway, I think I've geeked out enough. I think I've wasted 27 minutes of your time. Uh, so I'm going to let you guys get to it. Please, of course, share what it is you think below. Um, I'm hoping that you guys happen to watch this entire video after my five-minute rambling in the beginning. I hope you at least made it this far. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think, your theories, your thoughts on the trailer. What do you think about my theory about the Skywalker daughter? Thank you for tuning in to another movie video, and I promise when there's more gaming news, I'll be making some of that stuff pretty soon. I'll find something. I always do. So yeah, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys next time on another regular video for Rule of Two Review.